Kristen. Hello. Yes. You're doing a black screen today and on mute. What's going well, on? No, sorry. I was just waiting. Hello. I was just waiting until class started. I didn't know like what was um, happening. Okay. Mercury, Mercury one iodate. So uh, I asked if you guys remember your polyatomic I, I mean your polyatomic elements. I mean, some of them, but I have the sheet in front of me just in case I don't remember. Okay, so tell me some of them. Um, well, PO4 is phosphate. Um, I don't know right. if you didn't want me to like list all of them. <laughs> Hold on. Diatomic, diatomic elements. Oh, uh, diatomic elements. Oh, oh okay. Um, that's like O2, um, H2, Cl2, I2. Um, I know that there's a few others, but I can't. BR2. What did you say? BR2? Is that what you said, Jason? Yeah, BR2. Yeah. Okay. What is that saying? And, and uh, yeah, have. have no fear of ice cold beer. beer. What's missing? N2. N2. Okay. So these are your seven di uh, diatomic elements, right? So you also have a diatomic ion, only one. That diatomic ion is HG, and we always write it as two, and it's gonna be plus two because there's two of them, right? Each one only have a one plus charge associated with it. So when you write this guy, what, how would you write this chemical compound? Uh, you would write it as HG, Two um, IO three, but um, would you put the uh, two on the outside of the parentheses? That's right. So you put this guy in parentheses, IO three, and then you put a two out here. Mm -hmm. Okay, because we know that iodate has a minus one charge, so we're going to need two of them to sit there and balance out that plus two charge of our diatomic mercury one ion. Amen? Do I get amen, Vanessa? Amen. 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 Okay, so let's see, let's see. Are you guys ready for some chemistry, right? Ready to get to the nitty gritty? Yeah, I just didn't remember that part about it always being a diatomic ion. Yep. Because you know it's going to be on the exam. Okay, so let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, so I have 11 people, right? Okay, so we'll start off at the top. Jason's at the top. Okay, Jason, this is what I want you to do. Give me that name. Let's see, Kristen. Let's do. Yeah. Alan. What is that thing in the parentheses? Is that a G? It's a G. I don't think I've ever seen that before. You haven't seen that before. Hmm. Okay. Have any of you guys seen that? I don't remember seeing it. Excellent. Okay, good. I was just testing the waters here.
What about this one? Yeah, that was on the, the Chem 101 homework and I didn't, I'd never seen that either. I was gonna ask you about that. We didn't talk about assets, are you sure? We didn't talk about dropping assets. No, we actually did. Well, I just don't remember the, the AQ, I guess. Yeah, AQ means, uh, it means acid okay. essentially. You're helping me, if I could tell that H2 and that AQ helps us symbolize acid, okay? So, um, let me, let's talk about acid and gases. We, what was that, Jason? We did, your other class was ahead of us. Yeah. So we'll talk about it now. We'll, we'll take that as a hint. So there are three things that I'd like to talk about. And Jason, that is correct. Only thing it's pH instead of an F. I was just saying okay. that you, you uh, the other class was ahead of us. Yeah, so that's why I said I'm gonna talk about it right now. Wednesday night lecture and then you about this. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> okay. Okay, good, good. Okay, so that helps me remember exactly where we left off that. So let's talk about assets to see how well you guys remember assets. And then we will go on to covalently bonded compounds. So when we're talking about acids, we're talking about that hydrogen, that hydrogen there being a proton donor, right? Or the acid itself acts as a proton donor, but we know that this guy is going to be allowed to dissociate to H2 or 2H plus plus SO4. Two minus. Okay, what ion is this? Okay, not all you guys talk at once. It's sulfate. I was just waiting for other people. Okay, it's sulfate, A-T-E, is that right? Does it end with an A-T-E? Yes. I ate organic apples, despite them being poisonous, okay? So, eight. This acid here is going to be called sulfuric. Because when that acid dissociates, because that's what acids are basically going to do, they're going to dissociate to that H plus and the other polyatomic ion, that's one of the characteristics of basically strong acids. They do that dissociation. You have this ion being generated. You know that SO4 in this context is that ion. So an acid is just a special ion. So normally hydrogen is a, is that a metal or non-metal? Uh, let's see, Vanessa. Is hydrogen a metal or non-metal? Okay, we'll go down the list. Kevin, 
Sorry, a non-metal. It's a non-metal. It's a non-metal, right? And so what is the rule typically when we have all non-metals? What type of bonds do they typically form? Uh, Cheyenne. If I have two non-metals together, what type of bonds do they typically form? You should know this from chapter 12. We went over it, we went over it, we went over it. Not to say Cheyenne only, the class, right? Hold on, I'm just looking through my notes. Okay. Covalent? Covalent, that is correct. Covalent, okay? So we know that if you have two non-metals, they're supposed to be forming a covalent bond. But when hydrogen is in the context of water, AQ, aqueous solution, it acts as if it's an ion. It acts as if it's a plus one metal. So it, it acts just like a plus one metal. Where is hydrogen located on the periodic table? Which group is it located in? In group one. In group one, which is kind of crazy because you know that it's a non-metal, right? So why didn't they put it on the other side? The reason why they didn't put it on the other side because hydrogen is a little crazy, okay? It's not stable, right? It's like he's a little cray cray. So he thinks he's a group metal. He's a group one metal when he's in water, right? So this guy here acts as an acid. An acid is a special case where you're using hydrogen to act as an ion. So you get the hydronium. This guy is called the hydronium ion. And the guys already told me that this guy is the sulfate ion. Okay, so it's a special exception. You guys, are you with me right now? Yes. Okay. So yes. when you see when you see hydrogen specifically placed in front, kind of like the the metals are placed in front of the ion and in, in front of the cation. That's typically a sign that you're dealing with an acid. That's one of the signs. And then also. Another way of confirming that is usually by AQ. Sometimes some books get lazy and they don't put anything and they'll just say, oh, this is an acid. Then you know it's supposed to be an, an aqueous solution. Okay? Are you guys kind of with me? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, good. So I ate organic apples. Anytime that your, your ion here ends with an eight, because we know that that guy is sulfate, we know that we're going to put I see an acid. So for instance, if I write what is that guy going to be called? I hear crickets. Jennifer. Hi, uh, yes. What is this acid going to be called? Uh, let's see. That will be called. Give me one minute. Let's see. PO5. Sorry, I'm looking at the polyatomic ion table. Okay. I haven't printed it out yet. Jackson, excuse me. Move. No, you move. All right, I have it here now. So PO5. What is PO5? That would be an acid, right? It would be an acid. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you for giving me time. That's right. Ah. Per. That's oh. what it is. So it's um. Oh. Per phos. Per phosphoric. No. What would you? Per phosphoric. Per phosphoric acid. Thank you. Good job. Thanks. <laughs> Let me go close my windows, sorry. There's a lot of ruckus outside.
So let me type that because that looks crazy. Per boss or acid. Okay. We know it's per because we have that extra oxygen. Because you guys remember that when we we're talking about the um, those anions and how we'd go about naming them, right? So we have that extra one, that extra oxygen makes it per, and we know that it's phosphate. So instead of using the eight, we drop the eight and we add R, in this case, R I C. So we put the it. Okay. So let's see. What about this guy? What about this acid? Oh, let's see. Brian. Hello. Hello. Um, Would that be selenic acid? There you go. Oh, wow. Selenic acid. Sounds like a girl I know. It's a woman I know. Let me be correct. There. Okay, selenic acid. Simple? Not too hard? Mm-hmm. Good, so let's make it a little bit harder, right? Okay, so when we know that the acid ends, or when the ion from that acid ends in an ITE, we're gonna replace it with an OUS. So for instance, let's do, just do this one here, H2SO3, AQ. So in this case, this guy would be called, what is this ion? SO3 hector, two minus? Sulfite. Sulfite, right? So since it's mm -hmm. sulfite, we're gonna drop the ITE and we're gonna put that OUS. So in that case, we have so. Furious acid. So I am so furious about you dropping acids. Okay. So what about this guy? Let's see. Oh, uh, let's see, let's see. Kevin. Um, I think it's uh, hypochlorous acid. That is correct. Hypo chlorous acid. Okay, simple, not too hard. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, I can't find that on my plaget at atomic ion table. That's right. Because th there's, there's like no um, subscript. So. Yeah, that's right. There's no subscript because we've lost. And what was the rule? 
So remember, I told you, you're going to have to know some of these things, right? What was the rule? Oh, the yeah. Rule? Um, so if, if it drops that, um, the oxygen atom, it's um, hypo. That's right. Um, from, but from which the... one should I look for to get like the the root word? It, would it be the... Um... What is this? Hypochlorite on the second, second. Oh, okay. Oh, gotcha. Oh, um, so it is on the edit table. Okay, cool. Gotcha. Thank you. So, but again, don't forget the root. Uh, don't forget the rules, because yeah. I'm going to put stuff that isn't going to be on there. I promise you. Yes. I have at least a, two of those. Yes. So I want you I guys confused. to know this, right? I, I have a question too. So, for selenic acid, I know that selenate is not on our table, but yep. if it's not on here, are we going to assume that it's going to have four oxygens for the ATE, like for so the why do we selenate? That is a good question. We've talked about this. Why do we assume that it has four oxygens? Anybody want to answer that question? I don't remember because some of the ATEs have three, which is why I'm kind of kind of confused on that one. So where is selenate, selenate located? I mean, where is selenium in, at? in the periodic table? So do we just assume that the that because the other elements in that same group have similar properties that it would have the same number of oxygen atoms? That is correct. That would be a good assumption. Yep. Okay. So like tellurium would fall in. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. On the sulfur, right? Yeah. So telluric. Okay. So if I had telluric acid, what would that look like? Uh, like TeO4. Tell oh, tellur telluric acid, yeah. So it'd be H2. And TeO4 with the... Thank you. Okay, that's just kind of where I was confused. Okay. Does it? Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. I won't ask it. I know. I know my answer already. Okay. Okay. Questions, concerns, cash. Not so far. Good. I know. I don't see any money coming in my way. Okay. So let me tell you one more, one more acid. So uh, let's see, let's see. <laughs> Hi, Jackson. <Yes. laughs> He's part of the class now. He's saying, please Jeep, just in case you guys are wondering. <laughs> My ride has hydraulics. What is this guy called? An ion? Yeah, it is an so ion. What is the specific name? It's a sulfide ion. Can you hold on one second? Yeah. <laughs> Did he purposely not make that L in hydraulics a lowercase? I'm guessing he did, right? Um, I think he just forgot to put it in there. I think he's going to use hydro and X for the sulfides. Oh, I see. So you're going to use L. I think that's what he wrote it like that. Oh, so it, it is purposeful? Yeah. Yeah, I think oh, okay. it is purposely lowercase. I think okay. it's like all the uppercases what we're going to use. Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Welcome back. Yeah. 
you know those the <laughs> one of the best things about uh being at home right anybody comes over at any time so yeah, yeah my dad just dropped by so <laughs> Okay, so we were talking about my ride has hydraulics, right? And you told me this was called what again? Sulfide. Sulfide, right? Does that end with IDE? Yes, sir. Okay, so the acid that will be made from this it's called hydro so ferric acid. Okay. I It, okay, acid, simple? Yes. Okay. Is, is that because it doesn't have an oxygen? That is exactly it. Because okay. it doesn't have an oxygen, good job. We use that hydro to let us know, to remind us that there's no oxygen there. So if we have If we actually have H3PO, PO, I'm sorry, H3P, what's that called? Is that like hydrophosphoric acid? Hydrophosphoric acid, exactly. Simple? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Oops. Okay, so those are acids, right? You feeling pretty comfortable with acids? Yes. Good, good. Okay, so let's go to Covalently bonded. Covalent compounds. Okay, so we're gonna start off here because it's the best way of starting off. H2SO4AQ. What was that called? That acid. Aqueous. Oh, sorry. Um, I thought you were talking about the AQ. Uh that was called um, sulfuric acid. So this guy, if we have a G or if we don't have a subscript, right? That typically means that, unless they tell you specifically, it's an acid. That will typically mean that you're working with covalently bonded compounds. So the way it behaves is going to be different. It's not going to form the ion. It's not going to form an ion at all. So the way we go about naming it is by using Greek prefixes. Do you guys remember your Greek prefixes? Yes, but I, I just wanted to clarify. Uh, I don't think I heard you. So the G means that it's a covalent compound? That is correct. Oh, okay, because thank you. At room temperature, if you're getting given a G, that typically, because it means gas, right? Oh, okay. It's a gaseous compound. It's not an aqueous compound. Aqueous? Yeah. When you have that hydrogen in an aqueous compound, it's going to be an it's going to be an acid, okay? Gotcha, thank you. So we have...
Okay, so mono, what does mono mean? Only one. One. Die. Two. Try. Three. Three. Tetra. Four. Penta. Five. Hexa. Six. Hepta. Seven. Nona. Nine. Nine. Okay, I, I had to do that just to see if you guys are just going to say Octa. <laughs> Eight. Deca. Ten. She is Deca fine. I guess it doesn't work that way. Uh, Undeca. Eleven. Dodeca. Twelve. Okay. Okay, so now when we're doing the naming for covalently bonded material, it is probably the easiest thing to do. All you need to do is tell me how many of each you have and then what non-metal it is. So then in this case, this guy would be called, I'll show you multiple ways because mono is kind of optional. Sometimes we use mono, sometimes we don't. So if we have, it would be di, hydrogen, if I could spell, dihydrogen, sulfur, tetra, that's actually tet, text, text oxide. So with oxygen, you drop the, the uh, the verb is right, not the verb. The the Just a, drop the a. the a. You drop <laughs> the a, the o, the i. You know, so in, in the case of of oxygen, but only in oxygen. Everybody else keeps it. Okay, so it's it'll be called dihydrogen sulfur tetroxide, or you could call it dihydrogen. Mono sulfur tet oxide. We okay. dropped the suffix, you said? You dropped the the A at the end. Oh. So you notice it's not tetra oxide, it's tetra oxide. Okay. Yeah, so you dropped the vowel basically? Yep. Thank you. The vowel. Okay, so in this case, let's do this one. Usually there'll be a G, or if there's no if there's nothing there at all. And that's an O, that's not a six. Fix that. Okay. So what would I name this guy? Would it be triphosphorus tetroxide? That is correct. Simple? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So the other thing is that you want to pay attention to is that you notice how all of them have their normal name, dihydrogen, sulfur, but the end is given the I, right? It's ox I. So that tells us. So the I tells us one of two things. It either tells us at the end of the compound or it tells us that it is a negatively charged ion. Right? Hide. Like chloride. Sodium chloride. Right? So it has two jobs. Okay? So let me give you one more. See if you guys really understand. Are you pulling my leg? OK. 
Okay. What would that guy be called? Uh, let's see. Who, who, who? Cheyenne, you've been real quiet lately. Um, is it dihydrogen? And then you could do just sulfur or monosulfur, right? Yep. Okay, so just sulfur and then tetron. Wait, how would you say tetranitride? Tetranitride, that's right. Oops, I forgot my A. There you go. Okay, piece of cake, simple. Yes. Okay, so I have one more thing to teach you. One more thing, un mas, or uno mas, una mas. You know what I'm saying. Manos. <laughs> Mono mass. <laughs> okay. So, um, did you say we only drop the vowel if it's if it has an oxygen? Yeah, if the oxygen is that last, oh. is the last one, right? Okay. So let's say, for instance, yeah, and even if it isn't the last one, right? So if it's oxygen, we'll do. Let's do this. H two C N. O, C, L, two, or now let's do F. That'll be correct. F two. Okay. So what we name this guy? Um, dihydrogen. Um, carbon. Will we just put nitrogen there too? That's right. Um. There's two lines. Do we just put oxygen? Or is that is that what changes? Oh, sorry, hold on. Let me let me put a number here so that it makes put three here. Oh. Um, so then it's trioxide. Oh. It's oh. It's troy oxide. Oh, troy oxygen. And then, um, what is that? Di soul? No. F two. Uh, I'm forgetting Di what F is. <laughs> Come on, help her out. F, F. F is fluorine. We don't want on our grades. So fluor fluorine? Fluoride. Fluor Remember, I'd, because right. it's the last one, last thing. Oh. Okay. That tells me, hey, that's the end of that compound. Got it. Okay. Okay. Piece of cake? Yes. Okay, good. So let's go with one last thing, and then we can. See if you guys, how will you guys remember stuff? Okay. I think this one is like super hard. Okay. These are called hydrates. Okay. Hydrates. The way you would go about naming the hydrate is you'd go ahead and name this guy as if the water, I'm, just, I'm going on the board. You're gonna pretend like the water part of it isn't there. So what is, okay, if you're hydrated, what does that mean? Vanessa, or no, Alan, Alan. If you're hydrated, what does it mean? Uh, that's H2O. What was that? H2O. H2O, right? So yeah. if you're personally hydrated, what does it mean? 
Uh, you're hydrated. Yeah. What does that mean? You're, you have enough H2O, I guess. You have enough H2O, right? Yeah. And what is H2O? Water. Water, right? So you got water in you. Isn't that what that means? So if you're hydrated, you got water in you? Yeah. Okay, good. So we've already established that. Hydrates basically means you have water in you, right? So these guys have water in them. So the way that we would write this is, is we give this guy its name. What is this guy's call? The SRCL2. What is its, what is the nomenclature for it? Oh, uh, let's see. You guys are being difficult. What's wrong? Is it Monday or something? Oh, can anyone answer? <laughs> anyone can answer. Oh, I thought you were asking him. Uh, somebody, say it? Oh, somebody says strontium chloride. Strontium chloride, right? Okay, strontium chloride. And then you tell me how many waters you have. So you use those Greek prefixes again. What is the Greek pre prefix for five? Penta. And then we put hydrate. Damn, that's hard, isn't it? Super hard. That's okay. the hardest one you've shown us so far. I know, right? <laughs> You're like, you have to be a brain surgeon to get this. Okay. And then it would be the, the same thing with nomenclature that if it was like a transition middle, then you would put the Roman numerals after the first element. That is correct. So if it was, let's say it was How would you name that guy? I forgot if that's two or three. What was that? I said, I forgot if that's two or three. Is it like vanadium oxide tetrahydrate? Yeah, what but we're it? saying we're, we're supposed to put the, the uh, Roman numerals in there. Oh, my bad. What is the charge on the vanadium? Is it four? That's right. So it would be. Oh, oh okay. That's because oxygen is a two, and because there's two oxygens and it's a four. That's right. I think what's happening is that like I'm compartmentalizing it into completely separate things, but I just need to remember that this is exactly the uh, same as chemical no nomenclature. That's all this is. All of it is the chemical nom nomenclature, right? It, well, th like what we were doing before today, really. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. And then what would we call it? You said tetra? Um, is that what you said? That that would be tetrahydrate. Okay. Piece of cake. One last thing. So, if we boil this or we heated it, right? What happens when you heat water? It evaporates. It evaporates, right? So we're working with chemical compounds and we want to make sure that the people that we're giving these chemical compounds to, we want them to know exactly if that thing had water in it or not, because sometimes if you have water in something, it can cause explosions, right? So wouldn't they be a little surprised if they go in and use a compound that was supposed to not have water in it, and it has water in it, and it causes a boom. Would you be a little upset if that happened to you? A little. Uh, just a little, right? Yeah. yeah. Lose an arm or a leg, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. right? So when we use this, and sometimes this is what you have to do because you don't have the chemical, or the chemical just naturally absorbs water from the 
the environment to a certain point, what you would have to do is you would heat it up and then you'd let the individual know that's gonna be using it. You would say this guy is then vanadinium for oxide anhydrous. That basically means that it used to have water, right? And it's been removed, okay? Are you with me? Are we here? Yes. Okay, so when you remove the water, we put anhydrous. Okay, any questions? Concerns? Anybody wanna give me cash? I can give you my Venmo so you can give me cash. <laughs> yeah, he, said, he said you can give me your Venmo so I can give you cash. That's not the way it's supposed to work. Oh, well, I mean, we already paid you when we signed up for the class, you know? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you can't get paid twice. Share my screen. Then I'm going to throw you in groups. But then I want to see those skills. Okay, so here, take a picture. Take a picture. You got, got the picture? It. Got it? Everybody got yes. a picture, right? Okay, so I'm gonna put you in teams. Are you ready? Okay, so group one, you guys can do this one. Group two can do this one. Group three can do this one. Group four can do this one. Group five can do this one. Then we'll go, oh, sorry, there's no five. Or four. It's one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, so this first one, what did you guys get for that one? Group Who is one? in Sorry, which Brian? group? Brian, oh, okay. Cheyenne, and Jennifer and Vanessa. You guys are we, a group one. We got mercury one nitride. So I'll type it up. Mercury one, you said nitride? Yes, sir. Okay, do you guys agree with that? Yes. Anybody disagree with that? Excellent. Mercury one nitride it is. Okay. Group two would be Hector, Jason, and Kevin. Three musketeers. For that one, we were thinking uh, ammonium silicon. Ammonium. And you said silicone? Yeah. Do you guys agree with that? Yeah, we weren't no. too sure. So. No. I think it's supposed to be silicide. Ammonium silicide. That is correct. Ammonium silicide. Remember, it has to have that IDE if it's a negative ion and also if it's at the end of the thing. Right? Isn't this at the end of the thing? And it's also a negative ion in this case. End of the uh, compound. Okay, what about group three? That would be Alan, Kristen, and Norma. Um, for that one, we got radium hypooxalate. Hypo. Oxalate or oxalite? Let me let me check. Let me check. Okay. Um let me see. Okay, so oh yeah, so it would just 
Um, would it be hypo or would it just be um, radium oxalite then? Or would it be radium hypo oxalite? So you're saying it's radium hypo oxalite or is it to be just radium oxalite? What you're That's what saying? I'm confused about. I think it's, is it, wouldn't it just be radium oxalite? I agree with that one, Kristen. With yeah, the oxalite. I? Thank you. It is radium oxalite. That is gotcha. correct. Gotcha. Cool. Group one, Brian, Cheyenne, Jennifer, Vanessa. A I O four, and it has a G there. We said mm -hmm. hydrogen iodine tetraoxide. Hydrogen iodine tetraoxide. That is correct. What's up, what's up? Um, uh, number, I mean, group number two, H I O four A Q. Get him, have you guys? Small. We, we didn't get to it, but is it periodic acid? That is correct. Is it periodic? Per? Yeah, periodic. Iotic acid. Periodic acid, good job. Or periodic acid. You knew what I meant, though. <laughs> I knew exactly. I knew exactly what you meant. But it it, it is periodic, right? Yeah. Good job. That sounds weird. <laughs> okay, group three. Palladium four. Hypodicarbonite. That's Kristen, Alan, Norma. Norma, do, do you want to take it? Yeah. Or Alan? Okay. We got um, PD and then in parentheses, we got CRO5. And then closing parentheses, then we got the, in little parentheses, the G. Uh, remember, it, it's CR2O5. CR2O5, my bad. Okay, hold on. Let me write that out because I like one. So BD parentheses CR2 O5. And you said two on the outside, right? No, there was um the ugh, the G. No, th th there is supposed to be a two on, on the outside. Okay, my bad then. Yeah, that looks right. Yeah, and this is an ionic compound, so there's no G. No G unit. It's a solid. Okay. Um, the zinc per arsenate. We didn't make it this far. <laughs> Take a guess. What is zinc? Of course, an educated guess. It's a ZN. ZN and mm -hmm. per arsenate. Um, would that be like arsenate with the five instead of the four at the bottom? That's right. And then to balance it out, what do we know about zinc? Um, it's a transitional metal. It is a transitional metal, but we know if it just says zinc, it means what? Oh, um, hold on. Let me look at it real quick. Um, it's a two plus. It's a two plus. Okay, so if that's a two plus, and what is arsen per arsenite or per arsenate? Would, what is that? It would be a three minus. It'll yeah, be a three, three minus. minus. So what would I need to balance each of them out? So you said zinc was a two three plus. Three zinc, two 
You said three of zinc? Per, yeah, and then two of the per That's arsenate. Right. That is correct. Good job, good job. I didn't even have to draw it on the board. Look at that. Let's see, let's erase this so it doesn't confuse us. I don't want you guys to think it's 22. Okay, what about silver oxide? That is group number two. It's uh, AG4O2. AG4O2? Are you sure? Is it oxygen always a diatomic ion? Oxygen isn't a diatomic ion. The oxygen is a diatomic element. What is the difference? I guess I don't know. <laughs> this is oxygen as the diatomic element. Wouldn't oh, that anyway. need... AG2O. AG2O is correct. So don't mistake your diatomic elements for diatomic ions. There's only one diatomic ion. Who's that? Okay, mercury. Mercury. Yeah, so okay. don't mistake your diatomic elements for a diatomic ion. A diatomic element means it's just that element by itself. It has nothing else it's attached to, okay? Are we good? Okay. Okay. Tungsten, and it also has a zero charge on it. Okay. So we have tungsten six thiocyanate. Alan, did you do that one? No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, well, I got uh, W. And then in parentheses, S C N. And then the six on the outside of outside of the parentheses. Piece of cake. What about magnesium astenide? So there's supposed to be in an, an, in there instead of a T. Aston. Did I misspell it? I thought you said astenide instead of astatide. Astatide. My bad. I did put an in there. Yeah. Astatide. Magnesium astatide. Okay. Group one, sorry. Ryan, Cheyenne, Jennifer, Vanessa. So we didn't get this far. <laughs> so maybe we, gamble, we right? can, yeah, just work through it. Um, so I know magnesium is a MG2 plus. Okay. And then here, MG2 plus. Astatide. Let's see. <clears throat> Would that be a polyatomic ion? Nope. No. Oh, that's actually that's, that's a name of it. Yeah. That's different. yeah. Oh, AT would be acetide AT negative. Okay. So, so then, then to balance it out, it would be um, MG and then AT1. I mean, two. Sorry. A T two. Okay. Okay, group two. Cobalt sulf cobalt sulfite octahydrate. I 
forgot my Roman numeral. I got a. Let me see here. I think you did it right, Kevin. Oh no, I have uh, to redo it because it had the Roman numeral on there. Oh, now he he made us do more. I think, the, I think it's the same thing. It's, so it would be um C O, and then S O three, eight H two O. Big old dark dot H two O. Okay. Yeah. You said eight H two O, right? Yeah. Eight. Um, is cobalt always going to have a Roman numeral? Yeah, cobalt should always okay. have a Roman numeral. Okay. That was my typo, my two typos, man. <laughs> That's two extra points on the exam for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I second that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's try to hook everyone up here. <laughs> okay. Zirconium, two phosphate, anhydrous. Uh, that's three. Norma, do you want to go? I'm still working on it because I'm confused a little bit. Okay, I, I am too, so we can work on it together, okay? Okay, that's fine. So first off, what I got, I got the ZR. Mm -hmm. And then I got parentheses. And I got HPO4. Then I got closing parentheses and then the subscript 2. But I'm not okay. sure if that's right. HPO4. Is that phosphate? Oh, wait. Give me a second. Oh, no. Something else. Give me a second. I need help now. I'm confused. What was the question, Dr. H? I said, was, what is phosphate? PO4. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you, do you see that, Norma, on the polyatomic yeah. table? Okay. Yeah, cool. I, ju I just found it. It's okay. And balanced? Is it balanced? No. What do I need to do to balance it? A three on the ZR, and then on the PO4, you need a two. OK. And hydrous. So does that mean like there wouldn't be anything other than that? Because the, that all the hydrogen? Correct. OK, yep. cool. There's no water, right? It's gone. Yeah. That's it. Piece of cake? Yeah. Strawberry yeah. cake with uh, chocolate icing and fresh strawberries cut on top. My favorite cake, just so you know. Sounds delicious. <laughs> it I is. I love it. Oh, yeah. Do we get I extra points? If we yeah, we'll send you one to school if we uh, get a little 10% <laughs> bump on there. <laughs> Uh, I love the briberies. I told you, you can throw the cake in with them, uh, two million dollars, and you got a deal. As long as we get an A. <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely give you an A. You give me two mil. <laughs> I wouldn't have to work for a long time, so it'll be worthwhile. <laughs> we'll give you monopoly money. <laughs> monopoly money. <laughs> Here, I'll give you two mil, all right. <laughs> okay. okay. I don't even think that I have enough in Monopoly money to, to give you, damn. <laughs> yeah, you didn't give us a unit, so technically that still counts. You didn't say U.S. dollars, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Real money. The real deal. <laughs> you know how it works. <laughs> okay, so you want to make sure you know nomenclature. Check your rules. The notes... Go over it very well. There's a summary. I'm going to show you the summary real quick. You want to know it like the back of your hand because that's a large part of chemistry is knowing what you're working with, right? 
And it's hard for us to do anything else beyond this if you don't know what you're working with. So I'm gonna show you a summary. Let me stop this with all of the rules. Maybe, I should, oh, I'm in the right screen. <coughs> Okay, so this is the summary of all of the, the whole system of, of inorganic nomenclature, okay? And so these are in your notes. You should download them. Make sure you understand it. 